Sometimes you just gotta make a bite. Oh, there he is. Look at that. Great big one. Ooh, ooh. Mm, this spot's gotta have fish. Ah, I got him. Good one, boy. Good one. Nice fish. <laughs> that did not take a lot. <laughs> 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 Fish don't have much choice as to where they live. They either adapt to their local environmental conditions or they don't survive. Fortunately, many fish species adapt quite well even to less than ideal habitats, utilizing their array of senses to help them feed, avoid being eaten, and reproduce. Water clarity plays a major role in determining fish behavior. Fish that live in gin clear lakes or reservoirs, for example, often rely upon sight as their predominant sense for survival. Yet the same species, living in dark, dingy river environments where sight is limited, tend to rely more upon the senses of smell, feel, and hearing in their daily lives. So what does this mean for anglers? Fish that live in clear waters can typically see at greater distances and are better able to discern flaws in baits or presentations, often rejecting them because they're not close enough to the real thing. Lures with subtle natural colors and lifelike profiles are often needed to entice bites. Yet use those same baits in a dark, dingy environment and fish may never even find them in the first place. Instead, you must use lures that appeal to their prevailing senses. Lures with lots of flash and color that stand out where sight is minimized. Baits with loads of vibration for fish to detect with their lateral lines and baits with easily heard rattles for fish to hear and track down amidst the murk. Today, on the edge, we chase dark water river muskies, appealing to their senses of feel and hearing, while bolstering our presentations with bright, bold colors to enhance visual detection and help trigger strikes. Ooh, there's one. There you go. Nice jump. Oh, oh man. man. Because no matter which senses fish use to their home field advantage, you can usually level the playing field through proper lure selection. <laughs> that is one heck of a muskie. And you know what? It doesn't matter if you're fishing for muskies like this, if it's smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, or walleyes. Understanding how fish behave to their environment, especially wow. water color and clarity, can help you put jumbos. Adjusting to it is the key. <laughs> you got it, Boy, man. Is that a beautiful fish? She's going back. Oh, there's there one. you go. Nice jump. Oh, oh, man. What? <laughs> Whoa, right what? in that hole on that big yeah, orange bait. Yeah. yeah. It was a flat stick when he came up and really launched on it. Yeah, Whoa. he did. Wow. Come here, buddy. Hey. Come here. I'm going to grab your net for you, sir. What? Get your net. Yeah. Boy, I just had a feeling I was going to get hit there. <laughs> Come here, buddy. Oh. Oh, boy. Look at that guy there. Yeah. Come here. There we go. Oh, you. you know, every time you go in the water, one thing you have to take in consideration is the water you're fishing. Water clarity changes a lot 
throughout the course of the season, whether you're on a lake, a river, or a reservoir, bring them on up, and it can definitely affect how many fish you catch by sort of adjusting to that water. I say you adjusted well with your first presentation, presentation. You know, it was weird. That's a good I changed start to a, day. a bigger, brighter bait. Yep. That's good, huh? That's good. Let's get her back in the water. Come here, little beauty. Get you back. Oh. Boy, she came up. Boy, and is that a chunky monkey, Jim? Yeah, she came up and hit it right by oh, the side of the boat. It. I saw it sort of flare up. I made that L corner right yeah. by the side of the boat, and she came in there and just launched the flat stick. Oh, and she didn't have any problem swimming away. Yeah, that's fun. I might have to steal that bait. No, me. no, I told you about that. <laughs> you called it. It took about ten minutes. He makes a call on a bait, and ten minutes he's got one. This section of river that Jim and I are fishing right now is one of those real special places. I've been here at this time of year before and had 10 fish days. It's a great section to fish. And I came up here about two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, and we had a lot of precipitation. Got to the river, it was high, it was muddy, fished all day, not a fish. We didn't see a single fish, but now it's been about two weeks and the weather's been stable, we've had no precip. The river is carrying a lot less sediment load and it's slowly falling and everything's been stable and the bite is back on. And one thing that the water clarity does is really determine the appropriate lure presentation. Last year when that water was clear, it was a little bit warmer. We were in midsummer. We were using erratic speed and uh, erratic action to trigger these muskies into biting. Now, right now when the water's cooler and darker, we're gonna really slow down. You use a lot of attracting flash and vibration, but it's a lot slower in nature to trigger the fish into biting. Right now, I am throwing what I consider to be one of the classic musky baits of all time, the Super Shad. And notice the dirty water and the color selection, really bright, super bright. Now this bait doesn't have rattles in it, but the split rings and the hook still makes some noise. And it's a real buoyant bait and it does kick off a lot of vibration. But this is only one of the many options there are for being successful in catching muskies in dirty water. Let's look at some of the best options. Water clarity really dictates lure selection for a number of different reasons. In dark water, fish tend to hold tight to the bottom or in and around cover. Speed is also critical. The darker the water, the slower you want your bait moving. Size. Large profile baits enable fish to use their lateral line to feel the bait's presence beyond their line of sight. Vibration and sound are also important lure characteristics for dark water fishing. Wide wobbling crankbaits with rattles, double bladed spinner baits, or slow moving noisy topwaters are all great lure choices for muskies in dark water. Some might ask about lure color. Today, a UV bright orange colored storm giant flat stick seems to be making all the difference. But in general, for dark colored water, we like to use brilliant colored lures. High contrast baits with dark backs and lighter colored bellies can also be good choices for dark or stained water conditions. No question, one thing about when you're fishing dark water conditions is uh, repetitive casts. You know what I mean? These fish cannot, they can't see very far. And right now we're sort of targeting that first fish we caught was actually caught out of a hole, sort of a corner bend. So what I've been doing now, we've set, seen one fish and we're gonna fish these holes a lot slower. And what I'm gonna do is fish the, the outside and then we're gonna fish it from the inside out as well. But the biggest thing is, is to make a lot of cast you know, to put the bait in front of the fish. Because it's got to get close to them for the fish to really find it. What depth are you in here? Now we're just coming off that bank. We're in 12 right now. Got him. Oh, yep. yep, there he is, right where I was sitting. I right saw, I could see spot. where the fish was sitting in the ed, nice. that eddy. Yeah, it's a good one there. This is a big fish. All right. Oh, Ooh. boy, he just bumped it. Oh, I knew the day was coming when I was gonna get my butt kicked. This is a big one, Jeremy. All right. I think, boy, it feels like a big animal. Not a small northern? No, I assure you that. No? This is not a small one, no. 
This is a, this <laughs> looks like a big one, man. It feels like right. a bull, real bullhead. All right, I'm on net. Give this is a better one. size fish. Yep. There he is. There he is. Oh, Whoa. nice fish, Jim. Come here. No, no, let's see. Oh. Nice. We'll yep. go to the other yep. side here. Yeah, we'll go all the way. I was going to say, that's a little too premature. <laughs> yeah, let's get him over up on this side. There you go. Yeah, Big headed one. Fish. Oh, yeah. Great fish. Oh, come here. There you go. Come here. Turn him around for me. Yep. Oh, no. he's real close. To see, it's coming off. Yeah, we better get her into the net. There you go. There we go. See, I, you, Jeremy, you deserve this from your past. Ex he beats I, me up musky fishing every uh, once in a while. And yeah. the worst thing is, is I'm driving the boat and catching them in back of the boat, which gets to be a real aggravation. Yeah. I'll hold this in the position sure. here. I'll do unhooking. I got a pair of gloves right here. Oh, oh I'm sorry about that. That's oh, all right. he's off. Here, yeah. here's the gloves. There we go. You want to see your fish, sir? No, you can let her let her go. Right. Look at this. You know, it it really is amazing that you could come here with a bait that uh, was like so. I'll just say like a, a classic musky bait, like a suic right now that was like a brown Cisco color. You know how many fish you'd catch on something like that? You wouldn't get bit. But you put a bait like this on right now. This little storm flat stick, man. It's loud. It makes a lot of noise. They just go bonkers for it. Oh man, that's a 20 pounder plus. I like him. Whew. I think it's those rattles, Jim. That's a big deal right now. That's yeah, but it's attention. not only the rattles, but this also has the UV colors. Ooh. That is supposedly you can see it more brilliant in dark conditions, but. Well, whatever it is, it's working. Yeah. I might have to take away an all time great and dig in the box. No, stay away from my box. I don't have any more flat sticks. You know, a lot of people end up rigging up their small little John boats. Some don't have a depth finder or a little flasher. We've got a big unit on here, and it might seem like it's overkill, but you definitely have to have sonar in these smaller rivers, especially in the fall when you're looking for holes, because that's where the fish are. But I also use this boat a lot of times for cat fishing. If we're fishing flatheads or channel cats, and you're fishing moderate sized rivers, you still want to be able to find wood, and so we'll use the side imaging of this unit. Also use GPS if you're fishing at night for cats or something like that, or if you're traveling, you're musky fishing until after dark. I've still got the GPS unit on here so I can make my way back upstream in the dark. So don't just get a little flash or something cheap for your little little tiny boat. It's definitely worth it to have good electronics because no matter what you're fishing out of, they're a very critical tool in catching fish. The boat that Jim and I are fishing out of right now is such a fun boat to have. This is a 16-foot Lund John boat, and I got a little 20-horse Merc on the back of it. But we can take this thing, slide it off a trailer, push it down hills. I can get into places with this thing you just can't take other boats to. And anytime you get to access water that is hard work to get to and people just don't fish, the results are just simply better. If you want to have a good time fishing remote waters, a little 16-foot Lund John boat, with the 20 horse Merc, we'll get you there. We're almost to the top of the spot. You know, if I was a really nice guy, I would give Mr. Smith this bait. Actually, you know what? We do have other of these baits, but not this color. This bait actually has a UV paint job. Is it making a difference? Well, it appears to be. But realistically, we have a really wide range of different baits for various conditions that we're going to face out on the water. We, when we came up here, we heard the water was clearing, but to tell you the truth, we have, you know, really a tr bright attractor colors. We got natural colored baits. You know, you got to bring a wide selection to deal with the various conditions that you're going to face out on the water anytime you go out. And the biggest thing is, is to experiment. That is the key. And once you tune in on a certain uh, bait profile and presentation color, it can make all the difference in the world. Right in that wood. Yeah. Oh, come here, buddy. Whoa. Oh. Boy, that fish was really tight. We've been sort of really fishing a lot of different types of cover today. What's really intriguing, <laughs> last year we came up and fished this area and actually caught quite a few muskies. I think we caught five or six that day. But all the fish were on shallow uh, flats, you know, four to five foot flats. 
And today we're finding all the fish are really, they're really Close targeted deep water. around the deep water. If you don't have deep water, yeah, let's just not put him in the net. Yeah. Just unhook him. He's not that bad. Yeah, He's just watch yourself. Those three hooks. Yeah, we'll, we'll get him out of there real quick. That's a pretty one, though. Yeah. Come here, buddy. He's not bad. Where's those uh, that? There we go. Whoa. Oh, careful, Joe. Yeah, I know. With that long bait like that, very dangerous. I just don't want it there. There, I got her now. Pop it out? Yeah, not a, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but it seems like deep water is the real key right now. And it's sort of, you know, interesting that's on a seasonal basis because there's big long sections of the river that has the right summer habitat and then there's big long sections of the river that have the right cold water uh, habitat where these fish winter. It seems like today we've actually been finding a lot more associated in those deep water holes. We may have to make a couple more chunks right up by yeah. that wood there. You know, just because of the nature of our business shooting television shows, we get the chance to travel around the country and fish many different lakes. And the intriguing thing is, is we go back to some lakes year after year, and every year it's different. The water clarity changes in those lakes, and it, which ultimately really affects the location and the, the presentation patterns that you catch the fish in. It doesn't make any difference what species, it's always changing. There we go. Got him? There yep. you got him. Got one, nice yep. one. Yep, there we go, finally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Boy, did he eat that. Oh, he just came off. He just ate the bait. Did you see he lunched it? <laughs> just slow rolling along that bank. Unbelievable. So the difference between working a bait like this in the summer in clear water, I'd be, I'd be really, really hammering that bait. And that fish, I was just, I mean, I'm just barely turning this wheel, just barely turning it. It was just a bump, so it felt like just a little tick, and I just saw it was down the fish's throat. Beauty. That was fun. I like that. You know, matching your equipment is obviously part of the success in any fishing equation. Right now, we're fishing with uh, Quantum 7 foot 6 uh, heavy action uh, rods. On an energy bait casting reel, it's a real fast gear ratio reel, which is nice. Once you hook a muskie, they move really quickly. You know what I mean? So you want that fast re uh, gear ratio, even though we're taking these baits and reeling them really slow. But the thing is, once a fish hits the bait, you want that fast pickup ratio. For line, we're uh, spooled up with uh, 832. This is actually a braided line, but the interesting thing is about this, it's actually Gore-Tex and uh, Microdyneema. And it's really nice, it's very, very strong and very, very supple line, but the, one of the real big keys about it, particularly as we get, as we get into more cool water fishing conditions, uh, g being made of Gore-Tex fiber, it doesn't absorb water, so your hands are a lot drier. You feel the line and it almost feels dry, which is sort of nice. Oh, there's one, good one. Good one. Wow, Jim, big fish, man. Whoa. Holy smokes. Whoa. That's a good one there, boy. I was reeling up and I thought I hit a piece of wood. <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> and then all of a sudden it started moving. That's I said, that's a good one. <laughs> good Hang on. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, whoa, whoa. Oh, you want whoa, me to come whoa. uphill? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, this thing is really a throbber. Right by the boat again. Yeah, whoop, over your head. Up. Yeah. Ooh, boy. Boy. Yeah, there you go. Come Ooh, here. Holy, barely hooked. Yeah. Got it. Yep. Look, spin the boat that to the right. Oh, come on, buddy. Oh, look at that guy there. Oop, I think we might have got another hook in the Whoa. Whoa. Hang on. Hang on. There we go. There you go. Easy. Easy. Right there. That's good. I think we got another hooker in there. That's a little bit better one there. Yeah. Boy, it looked big when it came up. Yeah. There, that's a pretty fish. Whoa. Ooh, boy. Easy. Okay, there you go. Okay, buddy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh. When are you going to look at this one, Jim? This is That's a, a really nice body. fish. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that is one heck of a muskie. And you know what? It doesn't matter if you're fishing for muskies like this, if it's smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, or walleyes, understanding how fish behave to their environment, especially water color and clarity, can help you put jumbos. Adjusting in the boat. to it is the key. <laughs> you got it, man. Boy, is that a beautiful fish? She's going back. Okay. <laughs> no worse for the wear. 
I love it. it smells like musky. Musky fishing is an efficiency game, and you need to put the percentages in your favor to locate and catch them. Discover how to track down and make them bite in Musky Logic, part of our Angling Edge instructional DVD collection, available at anglingedge.com. Hey, in a recent issue of Enjoying Everyday Life, there's an article that really caught my attention. Listen to the headline. In 1900, Europe was home to 70% of the world's Christians. Today, it's less than 1%. What happened? Religion happened. Over the years, it became less and less about the deep personal relationship available with God and more about the attendance at church each week. She goes on to say, I knew the church doctor and celebrated all the Christian holidays, but no one ever told me that I could have a relationship with God. I was miserable, unhappy, hard to get along with, and had no peace or joy, but I went to church. Goes on to say about Europe, they have some of the most beautiful cathedrals I've ever seen, but sadly, not very many people are going. In Switzerland alone, only 11% say they go to a Christian church every week. And in France and Germany, it's less than eight and 9%. Wow, wow. There's a tremendous difference between filling a cathedral, church, or auditorium on Sunday and living as a Christian. It's about realizing that we have to actually get out, get involved, and get our hands dirty, so to speak. You can be a message without preaching by the way you live and love. When I thought about that, one of my favorite scriptures came to mind, Matthew 5, 16, where it says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Think about it. Hey, from all of us here at the edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. We'll see you in the water. I sure want to take an opportunity to thank all our sponsor partners for making this show possible. And if you like what you see, let them know and support them. For more information, visit us at our website, anglingedge.com, and thanks for watching.